Today I'm gonna teach you how you can go from beginner to pro inside of Photoshop really quickly. Let's go. My name is Evan Wynn. Welcome to 11% Tutorials. So first up, once you load up Photoshop, you're gonna see right here, we have all of our projects, which I'm not gonna show you because they're top secret. <laughs> and then on the left-hand side right here, we have new file and open. Uh, don't worry about all these other things. If you're brand new to Photoshop, click new file. But if you already have a PSD file, then you can go ahead and click open. But we're going to create a new file. So let's click it. Boom. There we go. Now it's going to take you to a screen called new document. This is where you can basically set the canvas size of your template. So if you want a banner, like maybe a really thin rectangle, you can do so. If you want just a normal standard sheet of paper, if you want a square template, you can do so right here. On the right hand side, this is where you can name it. So we're going to call this my first edit. And then it lets you adjust the size based on units so you can choose inches pixels centimeters i'm going to use inches right now because we're going to be editing a magazine cover or album cover whatever you want to call it and we're going to be using a standard sheet of paper which is 8.5 by 11 inches and then you can see right here next to it it says 400 pixels per inch so you can basically change that right here by changing this to whatever number let's say if we wanted 420 pixels per inch we can do so too and basically that just sets the dimensions now what we're going to do is we're going to hit create and now boom we are loaded up inside of photoshop so first up what's going on right here this white little tab right here that you see in the center is obviously your canvas. This is your template. On the left hand side, you can see this is our toolbar. These are all the tools that you'll be using. On the top right here is the project. If you open up, let's say another project just like this and let's hit create, you'll see we have another project right here, but we don't need that. So we're going to close it. And on the right hand side right here, these are your properties panels and adjustments. So this is basically where you'll adjust the settings of any said layer that you're working with. And below that we have the layers, channels, and paths. We're only going to be focusing on layers. That's all you kind of really need to be worried about as a beginner. And this layers panel right here will let you see every asset that you ever import into this project. So I'm gonna select some images that I took a Playboy Cardi this past weekend. Shout out to I Am Music. Let me know what you thought of the album in the comments. And then to import it, super, super easy. Just drag and drop. Boom, there we go. Now you can go ahead and scale up the image just like this. Or if you wanna adjust the proportions of the image, you can hold shift and you can just like kind of stretch it like that. But I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and scale it up the standard way. And you can see these pink guidelines right here tell me if the image is centered or not. I'm gonna drag it right here into frame. And now once I'm done with that, I can just hit the return or enter key and boom. Now I'm gonna import a second image doing the exact same thing right here. Now you can see in our layer panel, we have these two files right here by their file name. And you can go ahead and turn off the visibility of one and then you'll see the one below it. That's essentially how layers work. And if you want to drag the image below it to the top, it will now become visible. So very important to know for Photoshop. Now, of course, as you know, learning the entirety of Photoshop is gonna take a lot of effort and time, probably a lot more hours than you're anticipating. But however, there is actually a great online learning community where you can learn skills really, really quickly. And that is called Skillshare, who I'm proud to announce is actually the sponsor of today's video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community where you can learn a variety of topics from everything including Photoshop and graphic design all the way to Adobe Illustrator or even video editing if you're interested. You can see right here we can browse countless classes right here by the type. We have creative careers, design, art, illustration, film, video, photography, etc. And the cool thing is that they even offer digital templates and one-on-one -on -one sessions with a personal instructor so that you can get a better learning and understanding whatever it is you're trying to master. One of the courses I'm actually taking right now and a skill I'm trying to learn is actually on Figma and that's basically for like UI design which also ties into Photoshop a little bit, but it's super easy to learn the way Skillshare sets it up. And one of the things I actually love is that they actually set up like class projects. So you can submit like discussions, you can submit your own student projects and the teacher can review it and give you feedback. And at the end of any class, you get a certificate of completion that you can then go put on your resume, get some jobs, maybe line up some gigs. It's pretty cool. We actually also have our own Skillshare course, but this one's on like video editing. It's on Premiere Pro and After Effects and how to make music videos, which we do go over title cards, I believe on Photoshop. So if you want to check that out, it's a link below in the description. And actually another cool thing is the first 500 people to click the link down below will get a free one month access to Skillshare community where you can basically master any skill of your choice completely for free on us, on the house. So once again, if you're interested, you can check it out in the link in the description. I truly believe that creativity is like a muscle and just like muscles, you have to go to the gym and work them out. Make sure you exercise so that you keep them growing. And Skillshare is like that gym for skills, essentially, hence the name. So if you want to check it out, I'll link below in the description. Thanks again so much Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and now back to the tutorial. Now we're really quickly going to be going over all the important tools in the toolbar right here. Now I'm not going to explain every single tool to you simply because I actually don't use every single tool and as a beginner I kind of wish that I just knew about the ones that I only needed to know about. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. First up right here we got the move tool. This one's very important. This just allows you to select layers and move them around. 
Pretty simple. Next up is a rectangular selection tool. This one basically lets you make rectangular masks by going ahead and clicking on this little circle in the square icon. I don't know what you call it. And then click that and boom, there we go. Now we have a mask of our photo. Looks pretty cool. I'm gonna undo that though. This is also the feature right here that lets you use AI. So let's say right here, I want to oh, add horns to his head. I can click on the generative fill button and then I'm gonna type add horns to his head. And then I'm going to hit generate. I'm going to go ahead and wait for AI to load. Let's hope it doesn't butcher the image. And boom, there we go. Now we have some horns added to Cardi's head. It looks like an actual demon now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how generative AI works right here. And you can see it created a new layer. So if I turn off that visibility, I can see the original and after before after and it'll actually give you three variations so you can click through these to see the different variations it created i actually don't want to add this to my photo so i'm just going to select this layer right here in our layers tab and hit the delete key after that is the last of tool i actually don't really use it that much because there's a better tool for this next is the crop tool and this one is actually let's say you mess up the dimensions earlier and you just want to resize your canvas you can do so right here by just using the crop tool just making your thing square and hit enter and boom there you go now you've adjusted your canvas next up is a very important one and this one is the quick selection tool so this one is actually really cool because it actually lets you select subjects so once I have my quick selection tool selected I can go ahead and adjust the size of my tool my brush right here so I'm let's say I make it 26 pixels the larger you make it the more inaccurate your mask is going to be and now i'm just simply going to draw over my subject and you can see photoshop is using some ai to pretty much select our subject and now what i can do is i can go ahead and hit that same masking button right here in the bottom right hand corner and ta-da you can see it created a mask around cardi and now we can drag him around and he's completely masked out so that's a very simple way to make masks and let's say i want the invert of that mask i can go ahead and select this black and white outline right here in our layer not the image but this this little silhouette i'm gonna hit command i to invert it now we have everything else but our subject so you can see if i turn off this bottom layer ta-da cardi is now gone one other cool thing to note on here is let's say you have very intricate subject like hair right here you can use the select and mask button instead of just masking it and now you can use the refine edge brush tool by selecting this little brush icon and if you color over the subject's hair you can see it's creating a very very refined mask that is basically removing all the little tiny minor gaps that you wouldn't be able to select with just a normal brush and now once i hit okay ta-da we have a much more accurate mask and if i mask that their hair is fully masked out very very useful next up is the spot healing brush tool i'm gonna turn off the visibility of our top layer and select our bottom layer let's say we want to remove something on our subject like this little piece of tape on the microphone with the spot healing brush tool i can just go ahead and color over that piece of tape and ta-da now it's gone you see how easy that was even if i want to remove stuff like a full bracelet i can do so by coloring over it and ta-da now his bracelet is gone but we kind of want to keep his bracelet next up of course is the brush tool now this is just so if you want to draw and like color on your subject i often don't really use the brush tool so i'm not going to be using it today after that is a clone stamp tool but i actually don't really use it that often because of the spot healing brush next is the gradient tool you can click and drag to create any gradient and then adjust the color next is the pen tool the pen tool is very useful this lets you make masks and shapes so you can go ahead and make a shape by selecting the shape right here and then you can select a color that you want for the fill and ta-da now you're making a shape but let's say you want to make a mask you can change this from shape to path and then you can just draw the same shape like that and if you click on the mask tool ta-da now we have a mask created in our subject after that is the infamous text tool now this one's pretty simple you just click and then you can type any text you want ta-da now we have some text i can go ahead and double click this and then change the font to whatever i want and I can also increase the font size to make it larger or smaller. After that is the line tool. You can click and drag and create a line. And then last but not least is the hand tool. And this lets you drag around the entire scene. But I don't really use that one that much. Now that we went over all of our tools, I'm going to go over a couple keyboard shortcuts that I love using. First up right here in your layers is select on a layer and hit command J to duplicate a layer just like that. After that is command T. And this basically lets you freeform transform a layer. So I can go ahead and hold shift and then scale things up vertically and make them very wide like that. Now my top text layer right here i can just go ahead and double click this and then change this font to like abc repro and ta-da now we have the i am music album cover and then last but not least we have command minus or command plus to zoom in on our image i'm gonna go ahead and actually use the command j one more time on this top layer i'm gonna drag one of our layers below our text and then i'm gonna show you how to remove a mask by selecting this little silhouette and hitting the delete key and let's turn on the visibility of both 
Ta-da! Now we have two layers right here that we can basically place text or elements behind the subject and it honestly looks really cool. And also let's say you have two layers right here that are part of the same graphic. So this I am music text right here is the same element that we have in the scene. So I can actually group them together by selecting both of them by holding shift and then clicking this folder icon and ta-da! We can double click this and call this I am music and boom now our text is selected and merged together in the layers. Now let's say we're still editing this magazine right here and I want to just add a barcode right here in the corner that I grabbed from Google just to make it a little bit more accurate. So you can see right here let's say I want to make all the white go away and just leave the black. Then I can go ahead and select our layer click on the drop down where it says normal and I can change the blending mode to multiply and now it's going to remove all the black but let's say I want to replace this and just make it all white instead of black I can go ahead and select our layer and hit command I also to invert it and then I can change the blending mode from multiply which gets rid of all the white to something like screen and now it gets rid of all the dark areas and leaves the white okay now leaning more into the graphic design side of Photoshop I'm going to teach you the difference between converting to a smart object and a rasterized object now this is something that I kind of wish I learned earlier on but it's also very important to know so basically there's two types of files in Photoshop a smart object or a rasterized object. There's also SVGs, but that's more in Adobe Illustrator, and we'll get into that in another tutorial. So currently right now, our I Am Music logo is two separate layers, and let's say I want it to be one entire layer together. I'm going to select them both by holding shift, or I can just select the folder that we made for it. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to turn it not only into one layer, but let's say I scale it down like this. I hit OK. And then let's say I want to scale it back up. Um, I hit OK again. You can see the resolution and image size is still saved. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo everything real quick. But let's say instead of converting to a smart object, now I select everything. I right click it and I hit rasterize type. And then I right click it again and hit merge layers. Now we basically have the same thing, but there's a difference in the file type. If I scale it down like this and then I go ahead and scale it back up again, you can see we basically lost a lot of image quality going on right here. And you might ask, why is that? Basically what a smart object is, is a smart object stores the image data and all the pixels that are in it in like a separate imaginary chest like an inventory of minecraft and then when you want to scale it back up it just pulls from those pixels and basically keeps the image quality whereas once you scale down a rasterized object and you try to scale it back up again it basically just loses that quality and it's really just a worse type of image however it is a smaller file size so i'm just going to undo all that once again and now i'm just going to select everything and turn it back into a smart object now you might be wondering why would i want to do this and turn this all into one layer when I can just keep it two separate layers and keep all the quality there as itself. Well, let's say you want to do something like add effects or filters to this layer. So you see how everything in the background right here is blurry. It's called depth of field. Let's say I want to make this image right here also blurry. So it feels like it's part of the image, but we still want to make it look cool. After converting to a smart object right here and selecting on it, I can go over here to where it says filter and then I can click Gaussian blur. And now a Gaussian blur panel pops up and basically I can change and adjust this radius to so make it super blurry or I can make it really sharp. So I'm just going to decrease this just a little bit, uh, I don't know, something like that. And ta-da, now it looks like uh, the I Am Music is also in the background and like out of focus. Last but not least, I want to teach you about adjustment layers, which is the button right here in the right-hand corner. This is the little circle, half white and half dark icon. I click on it and you can see there's a list of options of things that I can add. This is where you can change stuff like the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, and vibrance. Let's say I want to change the hue. I can click on hue, that's saturation. And I make sure this is on top of every layer so that it will be affecting every single layer in this entire project. And now when I drag the hue you can see we can change the color of this entire project let's change this hue from like a yellowish orange to like a dark red talk about whole lot of red am i right i'm like hardy glazer in this tutorial i swear all right now our magazine's looking pretty dope but let's say we have this image right here also and we created a square rectangular mass like we went over before then i hit command wait then I hit Command T to scale it down in another image. But let's say I only want this red to apply to this image in the bottom left hand corner. What I wait, I can actually do that by right clicking the hue saturation layer and then I can hit create a clipping mask. And now this will apply the effects on one layer only to the layer below it. So this is a very, very important tool. The clipping mask lore in Photoshop goes really deep. So there's a lot more to learn about it. But honestly, it's a really useful tool, especially if you're using adjustment layer. And now one last thing I wanted to go over before we end this tutorial is layer properties. 
these. Now let's select a layer basically, and then we're gonna select this bottom left hand image right here. I'm gonna double click the layer, and ta da, you can see the layer style pop up right here. And now we have all these settings that we can adjust. First up, really important thing that you need to know is the blending options. Blending options will basically let you remove all white or black from an image. And it's actually different from blending modes because these actually remove pixels from the image. So you can see it's starting to remove the darkest pixels first. We drag it to the center right here. Now we have all the dark pixels last. So this is a very, very important tool, especially if you're dealing with images or logos, let's say you pulled from the internet. So let's say if I add this uh, parental advisory logo right here in the corner, but I just want to remove all the white and then I can just drag on the white and it will remove all the white pixels. And now I'm just left with the black. Or if I want to do the opposite, I can start from the other end. So now if I hit OK and I actually right click it and convert it to a smart object, you can see we now have a transparent layer. Whereas if we use the blending modes that we mentioned earlier, the black pixels would still be there if we convert it to a smart object. So once again, a really useful trick to know. So there you pretty much have it, ladies and gentlemen, a full tutorial on Photoshop. I hope you guys learned something useful. And once again, if you want to check out Skillshare, the first 500 people to use the link below will get a free full month of joining Skillshare completely for free on the house right here so thank you again so much for watching also if you're interested in learning premiere pro in under 15 minutes you can check out this video linked right here